Well, g'day curd nerds. Today we're making Samon Cell. I believe that's how you pronounce it. Now, Samon Cell is a hard blue cheese, which I was very surprised to find uh, in one of my recipe books. Um, I modified it down to um, using uh, 10 litres or 11 litres of milk it is because I added in some goat's milk to some cow's milk to give it a little bit of zing. Um, it hails from France originally. Uh, this is not the AOC version of Saint-Marcel. Anyway, let's get on with the method of how to make Saint-Marcel. So for this cheese you need 11 litres of milk. So I used 5 litres of full cream or whole milk which was about 3.8%. I used 5 litres of light milk or skim milk which is about 1% and a litre of goat's milk. Now I sanitised all my gear beforehand and to that I added these ingredients. So 10 litres of partly skim milk. So that was the combination of the two lots of 5 litres and then one litre or one quart of whole goat's milk, which have been pasteurised as well. An eighth of a teaspoon of mesophilic starter culture. One sixteenth of a teaspoon of penicillium broke 40. 3.25 millilitres or five eighths of a teaspoon of calcium chloride that's been diluted in 60 millilitres of cool non-chlorinated water. 3.25 millilitres or five eighths of a teaspoon of liquid rennet. Uh, which has been diluted in 60 millilitres of non-chlorinated water and two tablespoons of non-iodized salt. So don't forget to, if you have any fat globules on top, just mix those in if it's thick cream and then pop the thermometer on the side of your pot. So the starting temperature of the milk should be 29 degrees Celsius or 85 degrees Fahrenheit. Now it's nearly there on my thermopen. Just stirring that so the temperature is read evenly. There we go. So whilst I was heating the milk up, I was made sure that I'd combined the three types of milks that I used uh, by stirring it quite well during the heating period. Now I'm going to add the mesophilic starter culture and penicillium roque 40 at the same time. I've got a sachet that has both in it. So they're the right quantities of the mesophilic starter culture and the penicillium roque 40 just in that single sachet there. So sprinkle that all over the top of the milk. If you just had uh, the both cultures separately, this is the time you add them both anyway. So I'm just making sure I get all of it out of the sachet there. Now, even though it looks orange at the moment, the blue mould, when it rehydrates, you'll see it actually turns a little bit bluey-green. The magic of, uh, of cheese making, I suppose. Okay, we're going to allow those to rehydrate now for five minutes. So five minutes later, just uncover it and we'll give it a good stir. Now you may also notice at this stage that you've got some fat sitting on the top from any cream that couldn't be reincorporated into the milk. This has now become cultured butter basically and if it persists um, before pressing, then you'd have to get rid of it. Okay, I'm going to add the calcium chloride solution now and give that a good stir in. And then I'm going to add in the rennet. So I'm using single strength rennet here, which is IMCU 200, um, between 200 and 280. So this is 200 rennet I'm using here. Now notice there was no ripening period for this, uh, so it's not a highly acidic cheese. Okay, so I've stirred that for no more than one minute. And just let that stop. 
I'm going to cover that up. I'm going to allow it to set for one hour and 30 minutes at the target temperature. Now this is because the milk hasn't acidified, so it's going to take longer for the rennet to set. Okay, now the time has elapsed for the coagulation. We're going to check for a clean break. That doesn't look too bad. So we're going to cut the curds now into 1.25 centimetre or half inch cubes. It was quite solid there. It had a little bit of difficulty getting the curd harp through that then. And then just make, make the remaining uh, cuts with your curd knife. Now I did see the other day somebody was using a steel ruler, uh, which would be perfectly fine if you sanitised it before you used it for cheese making. It never ceases to amaze me how ingenious cheese makers are when they're coming up with the different types of equipment to make their cheese with. Okay, we cover that back up again and we're going to let the cubes of curd heal for five minutes. Okay, five minutes later you can see a fair bit of the whey has been expelled there and we're going to gently stir the curds for 10 minutes only. So it's still at the target temperature, we don't heat the milk up any further, it just stays at this temperature now. Uh, if you need to reheat it a little bit then make sure you just check the temperature quite often of the curds. Now you can see there that I'm just gently lifting the curds at this initial stage, they may seem to be a little bit fragile. Uh, what you can do also if you see any large lumps of curd there that you can cut it with the side of your stirring spoon. So that's after the 10 minutes of stirring. You can see the curds have shrunk quite a bit. There are still one or two large pieces there that I keep spotting every now and then. But a lot of whey has been expelled from the curds, which is a good sign that you're on the right track. Okay, we're going to allow the curds to settle now as they uh, sink to the bottom. So cover your pot and we'll let and then we're going to wait for 10 minutes so 10 minutes later you can see that there aren't any curds visible there so we're going to remove the whey down to the level of the curds so this is a little bit like a like a washed curd cheese but you'll see the difference in a minute there's a slight variation here so remove the, uh, the whey. Now this may take some time. You can see that I'm using a sieve there just so I can get all that whey out as quick as I can without actually getting any curds in the ladle. So that works very well. So we'll let that settle. Oh, sorry, we're going to allow it to... We're going to stir the curds for 10 minutes. So this will help it expel some more whey as well. So 10 minutes later, you can see that the curds have shrunk again. And that's a little bit of that butter fat I was talking about before that I've just scooped off, the uh, cultured butter. Okay, we're going to put the lid back on and we're going to allow it to settle for another 10 minutes. So 10 minutes later, you can see that uh, the curds have sunk back down again and there's some whey there. I'm going to ladle that off with the use of my ladle and my sieve. quite amazing how much whey actually gets expelled during these 10 minute stirring times. So we're going to gently stir again for another 10 minutes. Now you'll find that you struggle a little bit here because there's not a lot of liquid um, to, uh, to stir through. And you can see there that they've shrunk again, uh, they've expelled a bit of whey but there's not a lot of whey there. Now 
There we go, there's the full 10 minutes. Okay, we're going to cover that up and we're going to allow that to sit for another 10 minutes. Just so uh, the whatever curd and whey can settle out. So we're going to do a little bit of a test here. We're going to take a handful of the curd and we're going to lightly squeeze it together. And if it stays in a ball and then breaks easily apart with your thumb, then it's ready to proceed to draining. So that's quite good there. Um, I was quite happy with the... Uh, curd it knits it together all right now if it doesn't hold together then stir for about another five to ten minutes and then test it again okay we're going to drain it through a cheesecloth lined colander and in fact there's not a lot to drain out really because it's all in the other pot which you could use that that uh, way for all manner of things from feeding your garden uh, any acid loving plants love whey um, any livestock, you can use it to make sourdough bread, you can use it in the place of buttermilk for pancakes, all sorts of things you can do with whey. Make it into a smoothie, it tastes very nice as well. Okay, we're going to allow the curds now to drain for 15 minutes. Okie dokie, so... I did have those covered with the lid from the same pot I was using. just happens to fit into my colander quite well. I'm just going to bundle up the cheesecloth. And basically, I, there was a bit too much whey in there, as I could tell. It wasn't going to fit into the mould. So maybe I should have let it, for it drain for about another 10 minutes. Anyway, so I gen gently just... Uh, Moved the bag around a little bit and whey came out under its own pressure. I didn't squeeze it or anything like that. You can see it didn't quite fit there. Just a little bit more. Yeah, and then I tested it and most of the whey was gone, which was good. And now it's going to fit into the mould. Perfect. Okay. So put the follower on top. And then put it into your cheese press. And we're going to press it about 5 kilograms which is 11 pounds for about one hour. Now if you've got a spring press, you may have to re-tighten it because it shrinks quite a bit during this initial one hour pressing. Okay, so one hour later, we're going to remove it from the press and we're going to take it out of the mould. Now be gentle at this stage, it hasn't quite formed completely. There we go, just gently turning that over. Now we're going to press that again at 10 kilograms or 22 pounds for 12 hours. So that's about half my spring compressed is about 10 kilograms for mine. So 12 hours later, same thing again, remove from the cheese press and take it out of the mould. Now it's formed up a lot better this time, you may get some little bits on the top, but just turn those over, they'll just incorporate back into the cheese. And we pop it back in the press, same weight, so 10 kilograms or 22 pounds for another 12 hours. There we go. So 12 hours later, we're going to remove the cheese from the press again, take it out of the mould. And this is where we're going to do the salting. So this cheese doesn't get brined, it gets dry salted uh, over the surface of the cheese. Now I should have measured in the box first, but anyway, you'll see a little bit of that later. Um, place it on a clean mat and you're going to sprinkle one teaspoon of salt on top of the cheese and then rub it in. So this is non-iodized salt. There we go. And we're going to wait two hours for the salt to absorb. You're supposed to be able to cover it, but uh, got a bit of an issue there. The lid won't go on. So what I had to do midstream, using the same mat, 
I basically just put it into a big container. There we go. Now these mats were sanitised, cleaned in the dishwasher and then sprayed with vinegar beforehand. Okay, so after the two hours, what I'm spraying my hand there is just white vinegar. So when I touch the cheese, I'm not transferring any yeasts or moulds to it. So any whey that's in the container, just drain that out, turn the cheese over, and then sprinkle another teaspoon of salt on the other side of the cheese, the one which is at the top now, and rub that in. There we go. Pop it back into the container. Pop the lid on. So leave that overnight now at room temperature. So the next morning, we're going to drain any whey again. And we're going to turn the cheese and we're going to salt, uh, repeat the salting period. So I did it all in one piece here. So you can actually wait the two hours, but I had to go to work, so I didn't have uh, that option. So then leave for another 12 hours or overnight. So now we're going to ripen it at 10 degrees Celsius or 50 Fahrenheit at uh, 90 degrees relative humidity. Turn the cheese daily for the first two weeks. Then after two weeks, you should see a blue mould bloom all over it. And what we're going to do now is pierce the cheese. So we're going to pierce the cheese all the way through in multiple places, horizontally and vertically with a clean skewer, or you can use a thermometer. I've seen some people use drill bits, sanitised drill bits, because it has a clean hole. And the uh, what we're trying to encourage here is the blue mould to grow into the cheese. So I go a bit crazy with the holes. The more holes are better, I reckon. Seems to work out quite well. And then on the bottom side. So I'm just pushing down until I hit the plastic, basically. Okay, so we're going to continue to ripen that at 10 Celsius, 50 Fahrenheit, 90% relative humidity for another two weeks and turning that daily. So after four weeks, we seem to get a little bit of an orangey blue on it. Uh, so you lower the humidity by leaving the lid off a little bit, uh, down to 80% uh, relative, relative humidity. And we ripen that for another three to four weeks, turning it twice weekly. So not turning as often because there's not as much whey to be expelled. So not much moisture collects on the bottom of the, of the, uh, the ripening box. And you can see it in all its glory there. So after a total of eight weeks of maturation, then you wrap it in foil. So I'm using aluminium foil here, basically wrapping it up, just putting one layer on and then a second layer so it doesn't leak out if any uh, whey does leak out into my cheese fridge. So you can store it in the kitchen fridge up to four months or for a, str for a strong cheese, for a milder one, you can store it for a lot less and probably eat it about now. Well there you have it curd nerds, there's same on cell, all wrapped in its foil. I'll be tasting this on the 10th of March, or thereabouts. Uh, it was a fairly easy cheese to make once I figured out the steps, but wasn't it a delight to see a blue cheese that wasn't simply pressed under its own weight? It was really good fun to have an actual press involved to uh, see how this uh, cheese develops. Now what I'm going to be interested to see is how are the veins going to develop? during the maturation period. So I've been turning this one weekly uh, just to make sure that it's even distribution of the fats and all that sort of funky stuff. But it's going to be very interesting to see how far the blue has actually gone into the cheese. And if not, it'll still taste like a blue cheese anyway with the addition of the Penicillium Roque 40. Anyway, thanks for watching Curd Nerds. If you want to see more interesting cheesy content, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Also, you can pick up kits over at littlegreenworkshops.com.au and don't forget to give this channel a big thumbs up and support us on Patreon. Thanks for watching Curd Nerds and I'll see you next time.